channel thank you everybody for tuning in now join me on today's video where we will be reviewing the pierre pauline panda mechanical chronograph watch by Merkab. now i did an unboxing a fair few days ago uh, on the watch and i've had it on since then so in this full review i'll go through all the details as i usually do we'll start off with specs dimensions we'll cover of course the dial setup the features that are present the design aspect and also we will cover quite a fair bit on the actual movement of the watch now as i mentioned in unboxing merca had sent this in to me so it is a paid promotion i get to keep this watch now as per usual merca have been more than generous to give a 50 dollar discount code which applies to all the watches on this store as long as you spend around $200 or more so that is a fantastic discount and to be fair to Merca they've given me a discount code for all the subscribers on every watch they have sent now to date I've received two watches from them and this is where I do a wrist check I've received this Merca Ocean Master and also have the Orange Ocean Master both watches are incredibly well built one of my favorite watches and I am quite a fan of Merca now as I mentioned in the unboxing on their website, they do have quite a lot of watches. It can get quite confusing because they use a fair few brand names. They use FOD, Pierre Pauline, Merca, and they've got just a bunch of other stuff on there like CZEN as well. So I don't know if it's a factory outlet um, and that's all the brands that they cover. Uh, but, you know, go on the website, check it out. I will link in the description and just have a good look around. And as I just mentioned, you do have that $50 discount code. So let's get into the review. Now, as I mentioned, this is a mechanical chronograph. Uh, I think at this day and age, it is just a bit of a rarity uh, because I think any Swiss-made alternative or even a Japanese-made alternative, let's talk about Seiko, very, very expensive for the same kind of caliber that you get in the watch. Now, of course, this is also a very classic, very vintage design. You know, this watch does take you back a fair few years and it does have quite a uh, fan-based following. Now, this is the panda dial setup Merca also do a reverse panda where the colors are basically switched around and as mentioned with this similar sort of setup um, with the same movement they do quite a few other designs so it's worth checking them out so let's start off with specifications and we want to dimensions specs wise i did verify this with my diamond selector tool the crystal that you see here is a vintage acrylic crystal now on the website they do have a sapphire crystal uh, so i think it's only on a uh, pre-order now other than that, you do have a full 316L stainless steel case construction. You've got stainless steel pushers, crown, and you also got a glass see-through case back. Now the movement running this watch is a Seagull ST1901. I have had experience with this once before on the Suges uh, 38mm chronograph. Now Merca on the website state this is a ST25. Now I did some digging and I couldn't find any information on a ST2501 which is what the movement is supposed to be. Uh, and looking at the actual movement, the case back, I believe it is a ST1901. So we're going to apply that uh, because I see literally no difference. Now onto dimensions you do have a case diameter of 38 millimeters you have a case thickness of 15 millimeters and you have a log to log of 47 millimeters you also have a 20 mil log width and the overall weight of the watch is a mere 57 grams so one thing that the watch does right straight away you know to add to those vintage aesthetics it does have those great vintage dimensions Time and time again, everyone is always after a 37mm watch, 38mm watch. Well, now you have one and it's also a mechanical chronograph. So let's have a closer look at the dial. As I mentioned, it is a panda style of dial. So you've got the black and white contrast combination going on. So at the 3 o'clock, you do have a 30 minute counter sub dial. And to the left at the 9 o'clock, you do have a running seconds hand. Now in the center, you can see there's a white seconds hand which is activated by the chronograph pusher at the two o'clock and is also reset by the chronograph pusher at around the 4 p.m mark now let's look at the text logos other features now because it does have a chronograph you've got a tachymeter reading on the outer side in black and on the inside you do have a minute track which is broken down to the seconds now the handset used is a polished sword style slash candlestick style of hands they're very flat and as mentioned polished so you don't really get any depth out of the hands as you can see the hands on the sub dials are in white against that black contrast so you do have great visibility and you've got this printed text below the 12 pierre pauline and above the six you've got mechanical chronograph 21 rubies 
the hour markers on the dial are applied chamfered and polished so nice bit of light play great bit of detail on the watch there now everything is printed really really well very crisp and very clear now talking about the crystal as i mentioned it is an acrylic dome crystal so you do have a really nice profile to that and the dome of course helps read um the outer tachymeter now for me i would personally prefer sapphire just because of durability i won't get any scratches but there is a group of people that do prefer this vintage acrylic crystal and you know they get excited about using that uh, acrylic polish to polish out any sort of scratches um personally i would find it a bit annoying if it got marked up really quick i mean hardlex is um kind of bad enough with that you're going down to plastic and over the years you also probably get some hazing on there but you know i think it's part of the whole experience but you know when it's clean it looks really good it does give the case a really nice profile and you've got some really nice clarity around the edges the case itself is a mixture of brushed and polished so along the log tips you do have circular brushing now along the top of the case it isn't a bezel it's a single piece you do again have some circular brushing now we turn the watch on its side let's give you a quick wipe down so you can see you do have a polished side profile and the case is quite thin quite petite and you've got a decent angle down on the lugs the lugs do stick out quite away from the watch case giving it elongated appearance and therefore with the strap that you put on there you will have a slight gap moving the watch on its side we have pier pauline signed on the crown at three o'clock let's turn the watch around and you've also got a screw down case back again brushed with the details 30 meters of water resistance pier pauline chronograph mechanical and then you've got this really nice display case back where you can see all the inner workings when we look at the movement i'll look at this in a lot more detail now the crown it has a very nice grip it is actually a very decent size because the watch is small it still allows you to operate it so let's go ahead and see how this movement works one very satisfying solid click gets that white second hand running press it once more and there you have the second hand pausing and you can do that again to get your timings press the pusher at four o'clock to just flick that second hand back now i do have one issue with the second hand here the one in the center is the fact that you know it is white against a white background so visibility isn't that great even though you can actually see the time on the sub dial but you know if you are using the chronograph um you know, you're gonna have to look maybe twice as hard in order to see it properly let's look further into the mechanics of the watch and the function so as mentioned you do click that button down and that second hand will start counting now that will also enable the sub dial to also count every minute that is clocked and i will do that all the way up until 30 minutes at which point you will have to reset it flipping this over let's have a good look at the movement as mentioned this does not look any different to the st901 on the sue guess so i am you know pretty happy uh, pretty confident to say it is indeed the st1901 or maybe a, a different variant to it now the thing about this movement it has 21 or 23 joules uh, there's a slight discrepancy with the information when you search for it and it is a column wheel mechanical chronograph movement so what that means is as you can see the cogs here they are arranged in a column and i'll show you how they interact with each other now the b rate is 21,600 vibrations per hour you do have a accuracy rate of minus 10 to plus 40 seconds which is very decent indeed and you do have a power reserve of 50 hours as opposed to the 40 hours or 30 hours on a Seiko NH35 um, with the chronograph running it goes down to about 45 hours which still isn't bad at all now let's look at accuracy so I did put this watch on the time grapher and you'll see in the bottom window now this going through four different positions and what I saw that it was reading at plus 13 seconds with a dial up position at around 0.2 beat rate um, at the crown up it was about plus seven seconds with zero beat rate error and uh, dial down plus five seconds again with a zero beat rate error and i think the most and with the crown down it was running at plus seven seconds but that's where we saw the greater beat error at 0.6 which is i think through the four positions it's, it's still pretty decent 
Now that averages out to be eight seconds a day fast, which is really not bad and a very decent and healthy amplitude as you saw. And, and of course, a very decent beat error. Now, as I mentioned, this watch is mechanical, so it does need to be wound on a daily basis. Well, it should be okay for a day or two up until 50 hours, but you can see as what you do, you just wind it. And the way you know that he is fully wound is you will meet resistance at the crown. So be quite gentle with it. You don't want to go full force in case you do damage anything. But as you rotate it, you'll hear it. It's just winding up the spring. And there we go. We've got resistance and that is fully wound. So let's have a look at this movement a bit closer. And how does this column wheel, how do these cogs and gears interact? So you've got the A pusher here. And you'll see a metal sort of spring here that connects to this wheel. So keep a look on that wheel right there. And what you'll also notice the column wheel arrangement. So you've got the cog here, which is responsible for the second hand sub dial. And you've got a cog here, which links to the minute hand and the hour hand and the whole mechanism. Now, if you press the pusher, just pay attention on that side. You'll see that has been disengaged. And now what we did there with that click, it allowed this cog to now interact and touch the center gear, which is responsible for moving that second hand. So let's pause that and let's watch that again. So here you pause the chronograph and it's disengaged again. So just look at that, engaged, disengaged. And you've got this cog here, which facilitates all that. So now when we reset the movement, press the B pusher, and you will see this will engage and set the second hand back to zero. So that's the beauty of having a mechanical hand winding movement. The fact that you can see everything working, you know, with the automatics, you do get the rotor that gets in the way. And, you know, I think as a watch enthusiast, as a bit of a geek as well, you can look at this all day. Now the movement is not an ugly movement to look at as well. You've got some really nice striping, some patterns on the movements. You've got some decoration, you've got some blue screws, and you've got these brass colored cogs. Now, what you'll also notice here at the bottom of the movement, this has an added function here where that's called a swan neck or a gooseneck regulator. Now, this allows for the watch to be fine tuned and regulated to increase its accuracy. As you saw, it's running at a very decent pace as it is. And, you know, if you want to know about reliability, um, I think the information that you'll find on the internet that it is a very robust movement and equally as reliable. Um, you know, I think it's rumored it's based on the Venus. I think it's 715. Uh, and the rumor there is that they used uh, Swiss machinery to actually manufacture this movement. And that rumor is quite popular. But, you know, I don't know how uh, true that is ultimately. But, yeah, it is based on the Venus, old uh, the old Swiss Venus movement. So you do have uh, that, you know, engineering uh, behind it. Let's flip it over uh, and let's talk about the strap. So Merca did send it to me on this very soft leather strap, uh, you know, with this really nice suede finish. Um, but however, I think it's a bit too light uh, for this watch. And as you saw in the thumbnail, they do offer a bracelet option. So I'm kind of bummed that they didn't send me a bracelet option and they sent me this uh, suede strap. I would have liked the bracelet option as it gives you another feature to really explore and to see uh, how good the quality is on that in case any of you guys wanted it on the bracelet. I have, but I have put it on a 18 mil leather strap with some white stitching, which I think goes a lot better with the dial color uh, and the setup. So the only thing that remains is giving it a wrist shot and you'll also notice there is a bit of loom but I'm not expecting much from it but I will do a loom shot just to have a look anyway. So there we have it, a 38 mil mechanical chronograph. Log to log is perfect, thickness is, you can live with it due to the box crystal but it is a very light as well and the strap I've put it on is very comfortable so is the leather strap that they provide um you know it does conform to the wrist quite well it doesn't sit flat against it because you do have a case back that's quite uh, blown out as well so it will sit just slightly proud on the wrist but i think the diameter you know makes up for that very light very comfortable watch and a very classical watch to look at
So here's the loom shop, you know, as I assumed, uh, the loom isn't the best, but you know, I've rarely seen any chronograph watches uh, that do have great loom. I think the loom on the hand is okay, uh, but the camera is really struggling to focus on that, but you do have the tiny dots around the hour markers, which you can just barely make out. But you know, don't get this watch if you want to look at it in the night time. All right, so time to summarize. Uh, before we do that, let's take the cost into consideration. So on Merck's website, this will set you back around $220 for the setup that you see here. Now that is around 160 pounds, which is still a very decent price. But if you add that $50 discount that you get from typing in watcher fans along the top there, uh, that'll bring the price down to $170, which is around 120 pounds um, plus any shipping. So I think that makes the price just a lot more better. Uh, and you do get a very vintage, very well-made watch for that price. Um, even if it doesn't have the sapphire crystal because as I said, it's not always about chasing specs There's you know watch connoisseurs out there I do prefer watches to stay true to that vintage aesthetic uh, Which I believe this watch really does good dimensions good case construction I don't see any obvious QC issues everything works as it should there is one thing that is literally ticking me off about the watch No pun intended actually there was is the sound um, this watch is is quite loud i never got the same tick out of this you guess and maybe it's because of the extra space or just something about the case that let's see if you can hear it but yeah on the wrist um if you are in a you know, sort of a peaceful environment you'll hear it ticking uh and you know it's okay at first, but after a bit, it does get quite annoying because all you hear is tick, 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 tick. So yeah, that's the only thing I would say about it. You know, other than that, I think um, there is nothing else to talk about on the watch. There's no other complaints, as mentioned, no QC issues. Um, something about Merca, I think they just need to increase their customer service or increase the communication. I've had a lot of you subscribers uh, comment and say, you know, they don't actually get back to anybody or the communication is a bit off. Um, so just just keep trying if you do come across a problem and that's all i can say on that matter so thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the review and i'll see you on the next video